Welcome to ITTV for Form 4 Physics. The title of this lesson, Bernoulli's Principle. We are now moving right to the end of Chapter 3 of our Form 4 Physics. In this chapter, just to recap, we've had a look at pressure, which is force per unit area. We've also looked at pressure in liquids, where it was pressure equals rho g h, density times gravitational acceleration times height or depth. We looked at air pressure, which we count as or take as one atmosphere or 76 centimeters of mercury or 10 meters of water. And we also looked at a way or two of measuring gas pressure using a barometer and a manometer. We then looked at Pascal's principle, which was used or is widely used in hydraulics. We also looked at Archimedes' principle, which said that the lost weight is equal to the weight of the volume displaced, or we can say the weight of the volume displaced is equal to buoyant force. In this lesson, we want to look at Bernoulli's principle. Now, Bernoulli's principle deals with fluids that are moving. A fluid can be regarded as anything that has particles that can move. Normally, we regard liquids and gases as fluids. Fluid. The particles can move. Example, liquids and gas. Bernoulli's principle. The pressure of a moving fluid decreases as the speed of the fluid increases and vice versa. This is the key to Bernoulli's principle. What we are saying is when a fluid moves very fast, it creates a low pressure area compared to the area around it. So this is what you really need to remember. You, this is what you really need to spot in questions or in anything that you're doing with regards to Bernoulli's principle. When a fluid moves quickly, whether it's a gas or a liquid, it creates a low pressure area compared to its surrounding area. Faster the fluid, lower the pressure produced. So this is the key thing. Now, let me show you just a simple demonstration of how it actually works. Now, I've got a piece of paper here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow air over the top. So, over the top, the air is going to be moving faster. Here is where the fluid moves faster. Now, what you noticed is, as I blew over the top, the paper rose up. Now, if the paper rose up, Think about it. It must be pushed up. Why? How? Well, this is Bernoulli's principle in action. When I blow over the top of the paper, here, over the top of the paper, the fluid moves fast. So, a low pressure area is created compared to the surrounding. Underneath the paper, the pressure is higher. As air moves from high pressure to low pressure, it pushes the paper up. Now, this is the idea of Bernoulli's principle. A fast-moving fluid is going to produce a low pressure area. The slower a fluid, the greater the pressure exerted. So, the slower a fluid moves, a high pressure area is going to be produced once again, in comparison to its surrounding, high pressure will push the paper up, just like we saw earlier. So once again, I blow. Here we have low pressure, fast fluid. Here, high pressure, because the fluid is moving much more slowly. So it pushes the paper up. So the key here is that you remember the two areas. You need to identify where it's moving fast, where it's moving slow, and where the high pressure and low pressure regions are. 
The result is a pressure difference. A resultant force is produced. A lifting force pushes the object. Now normally when you're asked to explain, the explanation finally revolves around the fact that there is a pressure difference. You have a high pressure area and a low pressure area or a low pressure area and a high pressure area. So there is a difference in pressure. A difference in pressure creates a resultant force. Now, let me quickly explain this to you. Now, if this paper is standing here or being held here, let's say on this side is low pressure, on this side is high pressure. Please understand that the area here and the area on this side are the same. So if there is a difference in pressure, it must be because the force on this side is less or lower than the force on this side. If you have one force greater than another force, you get a net force or a resultant force. And it's this net or resultant force that's going to cause the paper to be pushed in that direction. So remember, you get a pressure difference and the result of a pressure difference is a resultant force. And when we get a resultant force, in the case of Bernoulli's principle, we find that we get a lifting or a pushing force being produced. A fluid speeds up when it goes from a wide to a narrow part of a pipe. Why am I telling you this? Well, this is another area where we use Bernoulli's principles in pipes, exhaust pipes, jet engines. Wherever we have an area that is narrow, we have the fluid moving faster. Now, you just have to apply what you know. Faster fluid, lower pressure. Wide area, slow fluid, high pressure. Narrow area, fast fluid, low pressure. So once you work out that you've got pressure differences in a tube of different area and you know the wider area has a higher pressure and the narrow area has a lower pressure, then understand that these pressures are going to push against their surrounding. They can push a gas faster or push a gas slower or they can push a fluid up or push a fluid down. It all depends on the situation that we are going to use. We'll have a look at this a bit more when we move up to the board in a few moments' time. So remember the key things that we've gone through. Faster fluid, lower pressure. Difference in pressure produces a resultant force. A lifting force is produced. Remember, wide area, slow fluid, high pressure, narrow area, fast fluid, low pressure. So now let's move up to the board and have a look at Bernoulli's principle with some diagrams. So what we're looking at is Bernoulli's principle. So the key to Bernoulli's principle is the opening statement that we made. The faster the fluid moves, the lower the pressure. So remember this. On your exam papers or anywhere that you're doing some stuff, always write it down with a couple of little symbols and arrows. So, faster fluid, let's just use the symbol V for velocity. So, when the V increases, our pressure decreases. What it produces is low pressure for us. Remember the opposite? The slower the fluid, the, very good, higher the pressure. So, let's do that one. So, when V is low, P is high. And this produces high pressure. 
Now, let's look at this with an example of a situation. Let's say that what we've got is a object that is moving through the air. So imagine a round object moving through the air, rolling from up to down. The velocity above the object will be fast. The velocity below the object will be slow. Now, as the object moves through the air, let's say that above the object, our air is moving fast. Let's say below the object, our air is moving slow. Okay, this is represented by the vectors here, 3 to 1, fast to slow. So, let's put down what we know. Here, the velocity is high. Therefore, we've got low pressure. Here, the velocity is low, so we get high pressure. Now, there's a pressure difference between the two. So, because there's a pressure difference between the two, we get a resultant force being produced. So, there is a F net in an upward direction. So, what happens? This object is pushed upwards. So understand how to tackle this Bernoulli principle. List out your fast and slow areas. List out the low pressure and the high pressure. Make sure in your nice little diagram that you're sketching for yourself so that you understand it a bit better. You put in the F net going from high pressure to low pressure and then ultimately you're lifting or pushing force. So let's go back to the slide once again. Fast fluid, lower pressure. Difference in pressure, resultant force. A lifting force is produced. Now the next part, wide area, slow fluid, high pressure. Narrow area, fast fluid, low pressure. Now let's jump up to the board and have a look at this and how this is applied. Over here, I'm going to draw a tube where we have a wide area coming into a narrow area and then going into a moderately narrow area. So, narrow area, slightly wider like so. Okay, so this is our tube. Here we have it wide. And this is the other part that we want to look at, the narrow. Now, in this tube, I'm going to put some fluid and the fluid is going to move through it like so. What I'm going to do is, at the top here, I'm going to put a little chamber or a little capillary going up like so. Like this. There we go. Now, what's going to happen is, the liquid is going to move into these capillaries. The question is, how high is it going to move? Well, how high it moves depends on the pressure in each area. Now, here we've said wide. A wide area is slow. Therefore, high pressure. A narrow area is fast. And because it's fast, it means it produces low pressure. So, right here at this point, here, I have high pressure. Because the pressure is high here, and compared to the external atmospheric pressure, there is a fight between the two pressures, this pressure pushes the liquid up, say to about this height, like so. Over here, at this point here, the pressure is low, which means it cannot push the liquid up as much because the external air pressure is probably a bit stronger. So here, it only pushes up just a little bit, like so. Now, in the third tube, well, the fluid is moving not so fast, not so slow. It's sort of an in-between. So here, we get a level roughly in between the maximum and the minimum that we see in the first two tubes. So understand how the size or the area of the tube affects the levels that the water go up. Remember, wide, slow, high pressure pushes the fluid up. Narrow, 
fast, low pressure, can't really push the fluid up enough. So let's go back to the slide very quickly. Wide area, slow fluid, high pressure. Narrow area, fast fluid, low pressure. So understand the keys to Bernoulli's principle. It's this fast fluid, low pressure, slow fluid, high pressure. What you've got to be able to do is identify these situations when you come across them. Now let's try one or two questions. Which diagram shows the correct water levels when water flows steadily through the glass tube? So, look, what you've got to do is look at the diagrams on a piece of paper, try to work out where is the high pressure, where is the low pressure? Which one is going to push the level up higher? Which one is going to push the level down lower? Quickly do it. Remember, it needs to be done on paper. You can't do it in your head. That's cheating. Have you done it? Let's check the answer. The answer is C. Explain the observation in the diagram above. Now, the diagram above is the diagram of the paper where I blew over the top of it. Remember what happens? The paper moved upwards. So you need to explain it. When you're explaining it, the key things are where is it fast, what type of pressure? Where is it slow, what type of pressure? Don't forget to mention the pressure difference, a resultant force, and finally, the effect of all of this. What happens? Write it down. Even if you're writing it down in point form, it must be written down. Done? Let's check the answer. The pressure of the moving air decreases as the speed of the air increases. The higher atmospheric pressure, which acts on the bottom of the paper, pushes up the paper. So remember, fast above, low pressure. Underneath, higher pressure push the paper up. Aerofoil. The speed is greater on the upper surface. Area of low pressure is produced. The lift is produced by the difference in pressure between the two surfaces, which helps the plane take off. The aerofoil is basically the shape of a wing of an aeroplane. Or you can even use it as the shape of a propeller or we use it in also a few other different areas such as water skiing or windsurfing and things like that. We need to understand how the aerofoil works. Let's move up to the board and sketch the aerofoil. Now in order to understand how it works, we need to have a look at it in one or two different situations. So let's start, let's just make a little compartment for ourselves here. Let's start with the first diagram like this. Now, when the air moves across the aerofoil, the air moves faster at the top and slower at the bottom. So what do we have here? Here, fast, oops, fast, which means low pressure, here slow, which means high pressure. Remember when we have a pressure difference, a resultant force is produced. So there's going to be a F net in this direction. What happens is, let's go to the second foil here. What happens is, in this area just here, where the air is the fastest, we get a pushing force going upwards. So what happens is, our aerofoil starts to lift up like this. And then, as the air still speeds up even more, our aerofoil then sort of bends downwards like this. So here, you see how the aeroplane is lifting off. As it moves, it starts to lift in the front because of this resultant force. Then it keeps lifting and then it keeps lifting and 
whoosh, you fly up into the sky. So remember the key to the aerofoil. Number one, fast at the top, slow at the bottom, low pressure at the top, high pressure at the bottom. We understand that. Pressure difference, net force or resultant force. What do we get? We get lift upwards and then it moves upwards. And if you want to come down, all you do is you play with the tail at the back, lift the tail up and the whole process is reversed. It becomes slow at the top, fast at the bottom and then there'll be a pushing force bringing the aeroplane downwards. Although you don't want to bring it down too fast because then it may crash and we don't want that. So remember the key things on Bernoulli's principle. Faster fluid, low pressure. Slower fluid, high pressure. The speed is greater on the upper surface. The lift is produced by the difference in pressure between the two surfaces. So remember your Bernoulli's principle. Remember the keys. Remember to draw a diagram when you're dealing with the question. Sketch it out simply. Sketch it out just using a simple circle. Mark in fast, mark in low pressure. Mark in the slow, mark in the high pressure. Make sure you put a little arrow indicating in which direction F net is or your resultant force is. And then finally explain. It is lifted upwards, it is lifted downwards, it is pushed to the left, it is pushed to the right. That's all the time we have for this lesson. Thank you for watching ITTV.